let's go ahead and bring in KF Sito, the founder of Makan Sutra, food critic, as you all know. Uh, Sito, great to have you on today. We have been talking about this all morning. Tell us what this uh, new Hawker Center is going to be like in New York next year. What yeah, how can how can people not talk about food all morning, <laughs> all afternoon, oh, all right, evening, right, all right. night? All it's been eighty percent of our comments easily, <laughs> <C-tool>. <laughs> easily. Do not underestimate the power of food. If somebody forms a political food power, they will swipe in <laughs> GRC easily, easily. <laughs> How did you get this idea to export uh, the hawker culture? to the U.S., specifically to New York City? Well, as, as many of you all know, um, the first person that came up with this idea was Bourdain, Anthony Bourdain, the late Bourdain. He came to my World Street Food Congress in 2013, and he saw that we brought in 47 vendors from around the world, um, mm-hmm. India, from Europe, everywhere. These are true blue street food vendors, and we set them up in Singapore, legalize them, get all their licenses, and he was so impressed. He said, I want you to build my protein market in New York. And I turned around and said, well, this Ang Mo thing damn easy, is it? I told him, hey, Tony, it's not so easy. It's damn bloody difficult. You got the, you got the backing, you got the moolah, and he said, no problem. And we left it as that. He didn't do anything. And magically, two years later, one of his first investors approached him with that hmm. idea. Two years after we had that speech in 2015, and then Tony told him, go talk, go, go talk to Sito in Singapore. So we talked to Mr. Werther, and we had this idea, and then we went on and on and on, and one fine day, I don't really know what happened. There was a whole host of things that didn't come together. Tony said, hey, I, I'm calling this off, buddy. So I, I was uh, like, alamak. And then later he passed on. Ah, yo, that's the second alama. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the original, the other original main, one of the, the other main partner, which is a food court player, uh, Urban Space, they are like, uh, they, they got like 50 outlets in UK and US. Oh, wow. uh, we caught up, we caught up and says, why don't we carry on and, and do this idea, with this idea of bringing, you know, Southeast Asian or Singapore food to New York. So I said, okay. And we were supposed to open last year, but COVID said, hold on. COVID said, hold on. And in the middle of holding on, we got our UNESCO award. And then I said, hey, the UNESCO story about our Singapore food culture is so sexy to pitch and sell. And he, he bought the whole thing. And we, we have been discussing details over the last year, actually, how to do, what are all the little hurdles, legal, operational issues, manpower, blah, 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 blah. And here we are today. And Sito, just to add to that, I mean, we'll get into the, the details in a moment, but this is a real personal ambition for you, isn't it? I think you, you really want to honour the late Anthony Bourdain with this, don't you? Um, I don't know what Bourdain will say. <laughs> I'm doing it. And in a, and, and to paraphrase Bourdain, I don't give a beep. <laughs> but, but uh, I mean, he's... I mean, I know... Pers- I know the other side of Bourdain. He's very, very into the common man's uh, um, livelihoods, their yeah. culture, and you know that that's where we connect. All these other celebrity thing I do, celebrity thing I do not connect. I'm not even a fan with him on on his uh, social media. You know, we talk about real things we can do. And I said, Tony, it's it's about championing this culture. So, yeah, I'm just continuing, and uh, the other thing that spurred me on is I sense that, uh, you know, this food culture in Singapore over the last two years uh, with COVID is really striking this uh, hawker food culture at the knees. Everybody's yeah. going down on their knees and also moving on ahead, um, you know, with all these manpower issues. I mean, ask anybody in the, in the retail sector, especially the F&B sector, they are struggling to get manpower. For starters, mm-hmm. um, if you want to be a hawker entrepreneur, you want to go and set up a hawker stall, you bid a three, four, five, even an $8,000 stall, great, uh, which was out. Somebody bid 8000 for a stall at East Coast Lagoon. Um, yeah. You're not going to have people easily lining up to pay for you, to, to, to work for you, even if you pay university graduate prices. Hmm. That's a fact. And worse, in, in, uh, in you, 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 you think in a hawker center, hey, I want to hire maybe some foreigners, I don't mind paying them. You cannot hire 
foreigners under manpower laws. Hawker yeah. centre assistant jobs are reserved for Singaporeans, for Singaporeans and PR right. in yeah. this day, till this day. So I, I, I think that one, you know, it's, it's an insurmountable hurdle for sustainability of the business. So I said, mm. hey, let's jump on this Noah's Ark and let's go to New York <laughs> and tell the world <laughs> what Ark. this, yeah, Makan Noah's Ark, and tell the world what our food culture is made of. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, how many more egg tarts do we want from Hong Kong? Eh? <laughs> we're it's talking with time. KFC to the founder of Mark and Sutra, and we're talking about this new Singaporean hawker uh, center that's going to be started in New York City next year. Uh, it's going to be located, uh, we're told, uh, 135 West 50th Street, uh, just walking distance from Times Square. Is it going to look like our Singaporean hawker center? What's it actually, what's the vision of how it's going to look and how it's going to operate only Singaporean food or will it be the other food? Uh, give us the overview of what you think it will actually end up looking like. So look-wise, our partners came last week. They spent a good four or five days. I took them to like 20 hawker centers, coffee shops, and, and mum and pop stand alone hawker stalls. And uh, you know what? He saw the light box of the ubiquitous light box in a hawker center. And he saw these foldable tables with red plastic chairs. And, and he said, that's the look. And I said, yes. Because if you're going to do something fancy, like so, those fancy, right. smanchy food halls you see in Singapore, you're going to install that in New York, it's meh. Every, yeah. <laughs> every food court looks like that. But if you do one like that, it looks like a kopitiam or a hawker center, people will walk in and say, wow, it's exactly yeah, it what I flavor. saw in Singapore. Yeah. This is yeah. a true hawker market. And nice. food-wise, hey, I mean, you talk about Singapore food. What do you find in Maxwell or Hong Lim or Old Airport Road uh, these days, you find your chakwe tail chicken rice, lor mee, uh, uh, what, um, roja, wonton mee. You also see pasta, you also see um, burgers, mm. and you see all this. You see uh, it, uh, Italian, you see uh, what, uh, Thai, Vietnamese, Philippine mm. stalls. But this is the idea of this uh, new, a uh, newer. A uh, hawker center concept we are bringing over because Manhattan is so diverse. We need to give something to everyone that feels right and looks right uh, uh, as our hawker center does. So how are you doing it, Sita? Because I've, I've read your Facebook post and I've been saying on air this morning that you seem to be like the Simon Cowell of hawker centers because you're putting it out there. You're put there. If your dish is for us, if you think you're a hawker for us, then get in touch. And, and is that the process? Is that how it's going to be? You're going to whittle it down. You're going to take so many people and say, right, you, 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 and you, you're on the yeah. plane to New York. How's it going to work? Yeah. So I'm going to look at some of these hawkers and says that yours is a bit bitchy. And then you sang out a tune. <laughs> you, uh, that's a karaoke song. And then, you know, no, no, no. My objective i'm not out to look just for the superstar hawkers um i mean every other hawker every hawker is good otherwise those people will not be in business i'm looking for diversity and range so somebody you know with the diverse, uh, uh, crowds the tourists the broadway crowd and the thirty thousand uh office workers in those bankers and those it companies around manhattan itself we want them to come in and say, hey, you want burger? Okay, go ahead. I'm going to order chicken rice. And it's like, hey, I'm going to seafood soup or something. It's something for everybody. Te tare, yuan yang, the works. Are you going to let people chope? Chope their seats? <laughs> Finally, okay. maybe we can break think, that habit, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to sell chop, uh, tissue paper. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm guessing seats oh, right. must be... I was going to say, there must be one or two staples because we've been putting it out all morning and we have had such a wide range of, of as you can imagine, everything from spring rolls to chendol and everything in between. But there are yeah. certain staples that come through, Hainanese chicken rice being the obvious one, of char siu fun being another one. So I'm assuming there are going to be certain staples like chicken I rice and one or two others. Is that, is that fair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a bit, um, perhaps uh, two-thirds uh, of the place of the 18 stalls should be your hardcore I icons in Singapore. Fishball, noodle, bar chow mee, chicken rice, nasi lemak, all the different types of noodles, soy sauce, chicken, and uh, 
um, the um, roti prata murtabak biryani, those kind of stuff. Mm. So we are going Malay, Chinese, Indian, Nonya, and I'm studying a couple of Eurasian concepts, and then you get right. some regional stuff. So the curation is uh, very key. That that what that is what guides me based on the demographics in Manhattan. So before anybody designs any uh, hawker center or food hall, you have to study the demographics. Who's going to be your customers? Based on that, um, you design the menu. Fantastic. Sito, is it going to be, I, I mean, I assume it's going to be inside, like like Pasarbella or, or one of the food courts here in the shopping malls, right? I mean, you couldn't have it outside, right, in New York City? So, yes, this, uh, this place along... It's uh, between 50 and 51st, between 6 and 7. We are just two minutes walk from Times Square. We get a lot of spillage. If you walk from Rockefeller to Times Square, you have to pass by this uh, space, which was originally a footpath in the middle of, uh, right at the bottom of this huge bank, a huge building that says UBS. And it's close to eight, 9,000 people working there pre-COVID. Wow. Um, wow. So it was very strange. One of the tenants, I mean, all a lot of these tenants were complaining to the, the owner of the building. Hey, we gotta leave, you know. If you don't put a food court here, mm. oh, interesting. And then, uh, interesting. And then yeah. uh, you know, our, my partners came along, and he was holding this concept. He put it down on the table. And it's very difficult to open just any concept in Times Square. They have an association there that just don't let in any Tom Dick Harry dot com kind of concept. So. They proposed this idea of bringing the UNESCO hawkers there. They, they, they obviously Googled me and my hair was standing when they Googled me. And then they said, <laughs> yes, yes, we love this. So, uh, yeah, so we started drawing up plans and, and the, the owners are so, so enamored with this whole idea of bringing UNESCO hawkers there. Very, very supportive. And we've got good support from the, uh, the government. Tourism Board, ESG, you know, they are... They support us because I think they really miss fishball noodle like, and nasi lemak. <laughs> well, so no, bro, I mean, I can't believe it hasn't been done before, right. if I'm being honest. It seems like, a, I mean, I love New York. It's my favorite city. I try to go there every couple of years. Glenn is going there in a few weeks. So yeah. have a look. Oh, Find yeah. that location and, and send some Take photos. pictures. I'll, yeah. I'll, yes, please. I'll be there. I'll be there from the 7th until about the 12th of December. Will you be in town then or are you still in Singapore? Um, no, we are going for a pre, uh, pre-operation pre or recce trip maybe later in the year or in january in the yeah. cold manhattan snowy i know uh, uh, it's going to be lovely for a lot of them it's just so charming so uh what was your we'll question be right in times square so we'll go and have a look at the space and take yeah, some I'm pictures to see stuff. what it is i yeah. think so i yeah. wanted to ask you i mean you said the number one thing in singapore to talk about is food which it is number two is money and the thing that people have been asking most about this how much will it cost? Is it going to be a Mandarin Hotel $30 chicken rice? Or is it going to be a... We know it's not going to be a $2 chicken rice. So how are you pitching this financially? So we've been studying that. You're talking about how come no Singapore restaurants. Actually, there are. There are about six of them. Singapore Malaysian restaurants. You know, which is like a mishmash of... You know, yeah, they yeah, bundle they up Singapore and Malaysia. Yeah. So the people there, you know, what they're complaining they can't get the real it's neither here nor there Correct. so they want the real thing suck it in your face authentic flavors and uh, cost of operating a food court there okay let me whisper to you I don't let anybody know okay, it's just between the three of us huh? <laughs> cheaper than operating a food court stall in Orchard Road and in no Town. <laughs> come on cut it out yes we in Times yes, Square we get out <laughs> Well, there's a bit of an indictment of Orchard Road. <laughs> it's when, wow. when we ran with the hawkers, and the hawkers said, where have you been all my life? <laughs> so exactly. it's, it's very good. It's very good. And the other sexy thing, uh, I mean, that's that's the market rate in New York. Uh, that's what they pay. Uh, you know, they're not bringing prices down, especially for them, especially in Times Square. Who would want to give you a discount in Times Square? You know? right. And the other thing is, uh, you talk about prices, how much will it be? So we have been doing our research too. We showed all the hawkers six Singapore Malaysian style restaurants in and around the area, but nothing in Times Square. They're out in uh, out in Queens, out in Chinatown, out in Madison Square. Um, Nasi Lama hovers around. Guess, my friends, guess. Well, I'm going to say about ten US. 
Yeah, I was going to okay. say maybe eight, eight, eight US. Eight to ten US, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the cheapest one we found was 18 US. <laughs> the the star struck the star struck one was uh, 25 US. And and the, and the hawkers look at that. Wow, like that, I can pull lobster already. <laughs> so not we do not plan. I'm not surprised, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we don't, we don't, and, and, and another guy was selling chicken rice at $20. I said, oh, wow, okay. But we do not uh, plan to overcharge, oh, just because it's Times Square. We're going to be fair, and uh, yeah, we're going to compete or even uh, offer something more affordable than that, which, which the hawkers are very happy to do so. Fantastic. This is such a prime location. Morning, yeah. you get the morning office crowd, you get the afternoon uh, office crowd, you get the Times Square crowd, plus the Broadway theater crowd at night. Yeah. Um, Sito, first, uh, one quick question. Do you, are people going to be expected to tip? That's the first question. Yeah. Uh, like we do everywhere in the U.S. Second question is, what about sustainability for Tapao? Is it going to be all the styrofoam and plastic? Or are you looking to do something that's more updated and sustainable in terms of recyclable we, materials and that thing? So we are using it biodegradables, a lot of uh, more natural product Tapao. If I can use banana leaf, I will, I tell you. The other one is we are looking to sell our merchandise like uh, you know, some of these reusable, collapsible takeout boxes mm -hmm. and a Tiffin mm -hmm. Tinkat with a brand down there. So people who walk around, they can come down with a, with a Tiffin or Tinkat and tap out three or four items and go back to the office and eat. So we want to tell this story about awareness of uh, climate and uh, environment. So excited. Nice. I, I think it's... I think this is the last time we see him before he becomes the Donald Trump of, of, of hawker food in New York because it's a license to print money, I think. I think he's going to do exceptionally well with this. Let's hope he's not the Donald Trump. Yeah, let's hope he's a, I, I, let's no, no, let's no, 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 better, no, no, no. Let's find a better comparison. Hey, Here's what I, I say. Just, yeah. yeah, yeah. go ahead. He, if Donald Trump is listening, hey, buddy, can you tell us about this taxation skill you have? So the hawkers want to know how you how you snake around all this, uh, you know. Uh. I'd like to ask uh, for anyone who's listening on the regular radios, as always, twenty four seven. Cito is in a hawker centre right now, promoting our local food. Where are you? Let's give him a shout out so we can give him a bit of publicity today. I'm at, uh, I'm having coffee at Hong Lim Hawker Centre, waiting for this the uh, uh, Ipoh Ho Fun Q to subside. <laughs> it could be a while. Before I hop in, uh, before I hop in, yeah. order the last and, dish. And finally, food. I must ask finally, if and when this thing is opened, Glenn and I and Dan, we're going to do our radio show from your hawker center in New York. Live at the opening. What do you think? What do you think? Of course, God knows who will pop by. Robert De Niro? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, from the uh, talking to me, you talking to me. Yeah, talking to me is not far. It's not far. Hey, if I Everything is near. When you do your recce at the end of the year, make sure you make sure you do it over New Year's Eve, right? So you can be in Times Square at New Year's Eve and see what that's all about. Oh, man, I've been there. You cannot even get within a kilometer of a million people go there to watch a stupid ball drop. And that crowd is going to spill into where we are. They're going to be hungry. Second. They're going to be gonna hungry, be, man. They're going to come here and borrow hungry. toilet. Yeah, so we're going to do a lot of tapau, tapau stuff. There tapau you go. stuff. All right, KFC to uh, head of Makan Sutra, talking about the new Singaporean Hawker Center, going to go into New York City, walking distance from Times Square sometime uh, early next year. Congratulations on the project. Come back, will you, af after your recce, and, and talk to us more we about uh, how it's going and, when, and what, what it's actually going to look like. Yeah? For sure. Thanks, Great. guys. Great. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>